everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be talking about the brand new Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. Can we just take a moment? I love this packaging. I love the whole concept behind it. I love the fact that there are a lot of reds and a lot of oranges and a lot of golds and just oh, the packaging just is what got me. But then once we open up the package and take a look at all of these beautiful warm tone neutral shades inside, I was beyond excited at that point. This palette is just exquisite. The colors within this palette are absolutely beautiful, stunning. I cannot say enough about this palette. I have it on my eyes right now. That is what I'm wearing. And I can honestly say that I can see myself using every single eyeshadow within this palette, which doesn't happen to me very often. I think the last one that I felt that way about was my Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. But aside from that, like if I buy a palette, I see myself using most of the shadows, just not all of them. It's very rare when that happens. So this is the second time that this has happened to me. And I'm just really, really excited to review this with you all. So now let's get into all the details for this palette. This palette retails for 54 US dollars, just like all the other Urban Decay Naked palettes, um, online and in stores. You can find it at UrbanDecay.com right now. However, it is going to be available online for Sephora and Ulta on June 28th. And then you can find it in stores on July 13th. You get 12 different eyeshadows within the palette, each weighing in at 0.05 ounces. So now let's get into the swatches. I'm going to be swatching on my forearm in two different ways. On the left, you'll have a finger swatch and on the right, you'll have a brush swatch just so that you can see how they compare. So I'm gonna be starting on the left and then moving my way down all the way to the right. So it's going to be from lightest to deepest shade within the palette. First one up is Ounce. This one is described as being an ivory shimmer, which it definitely has a little bit of a shimmer in it, but nothing too noticeable. Beautiful ivory tone that I would absolutely use along the brow bone. Next one up is a Chaser. This one is described as being a light nude matte. So I can absolutely see myself using this all over the lid and then applying eyeshadows on top of it in order to help them blend and to just give me a nice clean canvas. And as you can see, it has better color payoff with a finger than it did the brush. Next one up is Sauced. This one is described as being a soft terracotta matte. I absolutely love this shade. I can definitely see myself using this as a transition shade along the eye, or just on days when I want a little bit more of a natural look along the eye. Absolutely gorgeous color. Next one up is Low Blow. This one is described as being a brown matte. Again, something that I can absolutely see myself using as a transition shade or on days where I don't necessarily want to wear a shimmer on the eyes. Next one up is Lumbre. This one, and I'm saying it with my Spanish accent, yes. <laughs> this one is described as being a copper shimmer with gold pearl shift. So it's definitely more of a duochrome eyeshadow. I find that it applies a lot better with a finger or a wet brush than it does with a dry brush. As you can see, the color payoff on the left is a lot better than the color payoff on the right. It is a gorgeous eyeshadow that I would absolutely rock on a regular basis all over the lid. I just love it so much. Next one up is He Devil. This one is described as being a burnt red matte. I feel like this shade would look good on any complexion. I really, really love this one. Next one is Dirty Talk, which is described as being a metallic burnt red. I feel like Dirty Talk and He Devil would be just like a match made in heaven. Just apply a He Devil onto the lid and then top it off with Dirty Talk. That's definitely something I'm planning on doing. Gorgeous, gorgeous shade. Next one is Scorched. This one is described as being a metallic deep red with gold micro shimmer. I really love the way that this applies with a finger or with a wet brush instead of a dry brush. I feel like the color payoff is a lot more intense at that point and you get to really see the gold shimmer within the eyeshadow. Next one up is Cayenne. This one is described as being a deep terracotta matte. Again, something that I definitely see myself wearing along the crease. Really gorgeous shade. Next is En Fuego, which is described as being a burgundy matte. Literally the only eyeshadow that somewhat disappointed me within the palette, just because it does swatch and apply with a brush a little bit chalky. Um, you can kind of feel it as soon as you go in with your finger that it is a little bit chalky. It's not as buttery smooth as all the other eyeshadows. However, it still is a beautiful shade. 
Next one is Ashes. This one is a deep reddish brown matte. I love the fact that they included something deep within the palette, but not a black. Um, this one I can definitely use in order to add more dimension or more depth to the eye without having to be afraid of like overdoing it because it's a black. So I really appreciate that. Last one up is Ember. This one is a deep metallic copper burgundy. I can't wait to play with this one, especially putting it on top of like a smoky eye. I feel like it would just look gorgeous. However, I do feel like this one is better applied with either a finger or a wet brush because I just don't feel like you really get a whole lot of color payoff with a dry eyeshadow brush. So overall, I love the palette. You just, you have a lot of different options and all of the shadows within the palette go together. There's not just a few that go together and then another few that go together or maybe you can match this one only with this one. No, I feel like across the board, they did an amazing job at pairing them or keeping them to where they can be paired in many different ways. They blend out effortlessly. I love that about these eyeshadows. When I was playing with them on my eye, I found no issues with blending them out. I didn't even apply anything as a base because I usually apply my primer and then I apply some sort of a powder base, whether it be an eyeshadow or a face powder onto the eyelid in order to help me out with blending. But I decided to skip that for this particular look and it still, I, I didn't have any issues blending it out or making it all look like one. The eyeshadows applied very easily, very effortlessly, and very evenly, which is just, ugh. If you're anything like me and you love warm tone eyeshadows, then definitely look into this palette because it will not disappoint you. It's my new favorite. I can honestly say it's a new favorite palette. So thank you all so much for watching this video review. I hope that you found it helpful. As always, take care, and I will see you all in my next video. Mwah. Bye.